Myrtle Smith is a lovely woman of 78 years from Staten Island, New York. She received a renal transplant about six months ago for diabetic nephropathy. Over the last one to two months, she has noticed it's harder to remember things. She gets headaches, has neck stiffness, and sometimes gets fevers. When the doctor takes a little more history, he finds out that she might be the victim of one of the biggest bioterrorist groups in New York City. Pigeons. Every morning she feeds these foul fowl, and they have thanked her with a whopping case of cryptococcal meningitis. Beware the evil pigeons. Cryptococcosis is caused by a genus of yeast containing two species, neoformans and gadii. The yeast have large capsules that exclude ink, making them very recognizable. Cryptococcus cause pulmonary, CNS, and disseminated disease entities. Cryptococcosis occurs almost exclusively in individuals with impaired immunity. AIDS patients make up the overwhelming majority of cases. During the AIDS epidemic of the 1980s and 90s in New York City, cases of cryptococcal meningitis far outnumbered all cases of bacterial meningitis combined. Worldwide, particularly in regions where antiretroviral therapy is not readily available, roughly one-third of the AIDS population have cryptococcal meningitis, and perhaps as many as one million cases with 600,000 deaths occur annually. Cryptococcus neoformans is found in soil contaminated with avian excreta, especially pigeons. Notably, Cryptococcus gadii is not found in the soil, but instead inhabits certain tree species. Gadii also notably causes disease in immunocompetent patients and is now commonly encountered in the Pacific Northwest, sometimes in outbreaks. We will focus all of our energy, however, on the Cryptococcus neoformans. The model of pathogenesis is poorly understood. The yeast enter the lung where it seems pulmonary defense mechanisms of individuals with intact immune systems are highly effective at clearing the fungus. Th1 responses are important in clearing any surviving yeast. The yeast have large antiphagocytic capsules. They also convert catecholamines into melanin, which appears to play a role in dampening the body's inflammatory response towards the yeast. It is unclear how dissemination occurs, but it's thought that yeast enter the CNS inside macrophages. CNS involvement in cryptococcosis presents as a chronic meningitis picture. Indolent cases may present as subacute dementia over months to years. The presentations of pulmonary cryptococcosis range from asymptomatic cases discovered incidentally from radiographs to much more active presentations with painful cough and sputum. Disseminated disease commonly presents with multi-organ dysfunction and skin lesions that can be highly variable. The course of cryptococcosis may be accelerated with greater immunodeficiency. The gold standard of diagnosis is direct visualization of yeast cells, distinctive for those large capsules. The yeast are easier to identify with special Indian ink stains that raise the sensitivity of CSF examination from 20 to perhaps as high as 50%. CSF studies will often reveal mononuclear pleocytosis with increased protein and increased opening pressures. Cryptococcal cultures are near 100% sensitive for cases of CNS cryptococcosis and have relatively good sensitivities for detecting pulmonary cryptococcosis, but these are not always time sensitive. Cryptococcal antigen tests detecting a capsular polysaccharide are both sensitive and specific in the blood and the CSF. Imaging may be useful in supporting a diagnosis of cryptococcosis, but it will not help differentiate one meningitis or pulmonary disease etiology from another. Pulmonary crypto is treated with fluconazole, especially in less severe cases. More severe cases require amphotericin B before switching to fluconazole. With CNS involvement, the initial regimen is amphotericin B plus the chemotherapeutic agent flucytosine. 